G'day folks. Just got in from a very quick scrap run around the corner, local HBAC shop. I got another one of these down Dakin inverters. I guess they're not as good as people say they are, they keep dropping like flies. This one here I actually have a spare working inverter module for, for this model. Close side. Don't know if it's got gas in it. Judging by the absence of the uh, inspection point cats, they've probably sucked the gas out. Weed growing in it. It's not too bad, it's not too badly beat up anyway. I'm going to pull this one apart and just see what's going on inside. Well, this sort of looks familiar. I don't think anyone has placed the cover on this control box either. Another one of these. I guess it won't hurt to power it up and see if it's going to run, but it might end up like the last one, in pieces. I don't think I'll smash it this time though. Might keep this for spare parts. Probably should have kept the other one for spare parts. That's all there. Some dead spider shell. No, it's shedded. So where's the spider now? <laughs> Obviously a lot bigger. Not in there. Oh, might get the bug spray out first. But it is the same as the one I destroyed a while ago. Uh, definitely needs a clean. But plug it in and have a look. Well, we've had this thing powered on for a good five minutes now and it just doesn't want to do anything. I tried pressing the uh, forced run button and that doesn't have any effect. Service monitor LEDs will not light up under any circumstances. Uh, I'd say this one's a bit fried. It is making a very light high frequency sound like from the power supply coils but the inverter's certainly not doing anything like it's trying to start up but it can't don't really know where to start with troubleshooting one of these I'm going to take it out and turn it upside down just check the solder joints the last one had a few funny joints on it definitely signs of a lot of moisture in here as well Moisture ingress in this unit's very evident. You can see a lot of corrosion on the wires. A lot of burnt ants around the uh, AC inputs. The moisture and pests have really gotten into this one. A dead beetle or something. Oxide. Just for the hell of it, I might try troubleshooting this board. Spider poop. It looks like burnout, but it's not. The solder joints are all good. It's your DC bus. Damn MSN. <laughs> This one's really nice, solder-wise. So, yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with this one. I'll have to get a meter out and just check the voltages on it. It has to receive 12 volts from in here, I think. This power supply. If something's cactus in there, then it won't be getting its uh, voltage for the relays to start. Although one of these coils or something is emitting a high frequency sound, so it is getting some power. But these 12 volt DC coils aren't getting any power. So the problem's probably in this board here. I'll lift this one out next and just see what's going on on the underside of it. The only problem with that is I've got to undo these uh, packs, break the heatsink seal. And I don't have any heatsink paste, so I can't really do much with it until I get some. Trying to focus back. It's 
still a lot of evidence of moisture and critters getting into it. But I've covered this one in a light spray of epoxy or something, but it hasn't worked. You can still see oxide on some of the component legs. Okay, well I've got a multimeter hooked up to this thing. I'm going to try and see where we've got voltage and where we don't. Now the power is on and I'm testing to ground so it's our main fuse here. I know that's alright. 240. We have a sub fuse here. 240. That should be a control on tab there. Nothing really. I'm only testing AC volts here, so blue test 1A. And nothing. Start of the DC bus is here, but there's no rectifiers, so this is all AC on this board. The main bridge rectifies in there. So we should get nothing across there. Nothing. Nothing. It's coming from there. This is our bridge rectifier here. We have positive and negative and positive on the outside, so these should be alternating current. We have nothing. And nothing. It's coming from there. And blue. So that's AC input to the bridge rectifier. It goes DC. We have a DC choke coil down here. And these ones on the capacitor bus. Hmm. You have to be able to get AC to here in order to run these relays and tell it to start up. So it has to be an AC connection going through, which is probably this one here. That will go through to this transformer and give us our uh, control. Don't do that. Fuck, this thing's covered in plastic. I can't get in there. 146 volts. Hmm. I'll sort of trace that circuit back, see whether it's supposed to be 240 or 140. And the cap's rated to 400 volts there. I assume that's part of the circuit. I wonder if we're not getting enough voltage through to the uh, control. 147. Maybe it's supposed to be restricted. That. Nothing. Nothing. There's another test point there. That's got 240 on it. Hmm. The relay there, 12 volt coil, so it has to get 12 volts from the control. Same with that one. And that one. That'd probably tell the compressor to run, the main DC bus. And yeah, in here. Interesting. So the last one I had would run just fine. You plug it in, you didn't need to worry about this control terminal here. These LEDs would light up and then this one would just start blinking and should come on. Oh, when the test switch is pressed. But that doesn't do anything. So, i just got to find out how to get my 12 volts back. Let's just try DC. We'll go up here. This point 12 volt. Yeah, 6.3 volts. Test point 5 volt. 2.6 volts. Okay, we've got half the voltage we need. 